Okay, so here we go. Chapter 14, practice. And we're going down to question 48. So I hope a flock of geese flies over and craps all over the windshield. Ruins the event. Geese. Okay, Vu, Vu Games and Game On are identical firms except for their capital structures. Vu Games is an unlevered firm with $68,000 of equity. What does that tell us about the value of Vu Games? It's an all equity firm and its equity is worth $680,000. It's worth $680,000. Okay, so Game On is a levered firm with $425,000 of equity, $255,000 of the debt, and an interest rate of 6.2%. Both Vu Games and Game On have an expected EBIT of $84,000. Ignore taxes. Vu Games has a whack of percent, and Game On has a whack of percent. Okay, so we know that Vu Games is entirely equity. And we also know that the return is $84,000. And so in order to be able to figure out the whack for VU, it's going to be, and by the way, it says no taxes, right? Ignore taxes. Uh, we know that the whack, therefore, is just going to be the $84,000 divided by $680,000, which comes out to be 12.35%. Now, what does Moroyani and Miller tell us about a whack in a world without taxes. It's the same regardless of the leverage on the firm. And so we know that the whack for the other firm has to be exactly the same. Does that make sense? And so really this was a, looks like a calculation problem, but it was primarily a conceptual problem, right? That's Modigliani and Miller proposition no taxes or something like that. Okay, let's look at number 73. Actually, let's go ahead and go through them in order. 52. An all-equity firm with, has expected earnings of $14,200 and a market value of $82,271. The firm is planning to issue $15,000 worth of debt at a 6.3% interest rate and use the proceeds to repurchase shares at their current market value. Ignore taxes. What will be the cost of equity after the repurchase? Well, the first step, and by the way, do you think we're going to be kind of in this neighborhood right here? The first step is to figure out what is the required return on the unlevered equity. Well, that would be 14,200 divided by the 82,271. So we're looking at 17.26%. Right off the bat, we know that any answer up here less than 17.26% is going to be wrong because we know it has to be higher if it's levered, the required return on the equity for the levered firm. So, here we go. Um, they are going to use $15,000 worth of debt to repurchase shares. So, we've got, now we've got equity of 82,271. <coughs> Is that 271? Yeah. What's the equity going to be worth? After. Oh, come on, this isn't that hard, right? You guys get your calculator on? Someone tell me this number? 67,200. Very good. Okay, so now we're going to use this formula over here. The required return on this levered equity is going to be the required return on the unlevered equity plus the debt to equity <coughs> ratio times R sub zero minus R sub B. Now, R sub zero, we have already figured out is 17.26%. So we're just going to say 0 0.1726 plus, how am I going to get this debt to equity ratio? Well, we said that they're going to borrow $15,000 and buy back equity. 
How much is the equity worth now? 67,271. And we're going to multiply by uh, R sub 0 minus R sub B. What's R sub 0? We've already talked about it, right? 0 0.1726. And what's R sub B? Oh, hell. T sub C is the tax rate. Oh, cost of debt. Yeah, cost of debt. By the way, it says to ignore taxes, right? Yeah. 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 Okay, so it is going to be our uh, R sub B, it's going to be 0 0.063. Are you with me so far? Okay, so how would I work through this on my calculator? I would start with, in fact, why don't you guys do it and tell me if you get this answer. So give me 0 0.1726 minus 0 0.063. Why did I start here? Mr. Dexheimer isn't here to tell us, but it's PEMDAS, the order of operation. Uh, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, uh, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Right. So that's why we start here. Okay, what number are you getting for that? 0.1096. Point what? 0.1096. Did anyone else get that? Okay, now the next thing I want you to do is multiply by 15,000. So we'll shout that one out. 1,644, is that in the right neighborhood? Okay, now we want to divide that number by 67271. What do you got now? 124438. Very good, anyone else get that? Anyone playing along? Very good. Okay. Now, last step is to add 0.1726. And when you do, what do you get? Yeah, 0 0.1970 or 19.7%. And so that would be how we get there. Questions? Okay. Now, let's see. That's number 52. Now we're going to jump to number 64. The fact that it makes you start over from question one is annoying. Affinity has a cost of equity of 15.4% and an unlevered cost of capital of 13.2%. They have 24,000 in debt selling at par value. The levered value of the firm uh, is uh, 59,000 and the tax rate is 34%. What is the pre-tax cost of debt. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and erase what we got up here. So it says an unlevered cost of capital. In our formula, what's that going to be? R sub zero. Yeah, R sub zero. So we know R sub zero is equal to. 0.132. Now they tell us that they have a cost of equity of 15.4%. What is that in our formula? R sub S. Yep. So it's uh, 0 0.154. And let's see, they have 24,000 in debt selling at par value, so it's not at a discount or anything. The levered value of the firm is $59,000 and the tax rate is 34%. So the value of the levered firm is equal to $59,000. By the way, oh, so we've got taxes here. Uh, and then uh, the debt selling par value. Okay, now let's think this through. If we've got the value of the levered firm is $59,000, that's going to be equal to our bonds plus our stocks. Does that make sense? Okay, so if I want to get the value of 
the equity, what do I have to do? 59 minus 24. Yes, is equal to VL minus B is 59,000 minus the 24,000. And I think that's 35,000, is that right? Okay. So now we have S is uh, 35,000 and B is 24,000. And they're basically asking us what is R sub B. What is R sub B? Now, I wrote uh, without taxes up there, um, but we have another formula. Oh, no, no, there it is. There it is, right here. By the way, why did that term not appear on the last one that we worked? Yeah, we were ignoring taxes, right? Okay, so what are they actually wanting to solve for? We're actually wanting to solve for R sub B. R sub B is over here by itself. Now, there's two ways to go about that. Being a, a geek, what I would do is solve for R sub B. And then I would work through this. Most of you are not that solid with algebra. Am I making a, a mistaken assumption there? You, do you feel like you're a real algebra witness? Okay, most of you aren't. So here's what we're going to do. We're actually going to fill in the numbers instead. And then we're going to work from there. Because it's easier for people to work with numbers than it is to work with letters. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll, we'll actually write under here. So the required return on the stock we said is R, is a R sub S 0.154 is equal to 0 0.132 plus we said B was 24,000 and S is 35,000 and we're multiplying by 1 minus T sub C. What's the tax rate? 34%? If I just write 0 0.66 here, is that going to blow your mind? No. It's just 1 minus 0.34, right? And then finally, uh, we're going to multiply by R sub 0, which we said was 0 0.132 minus R sub B. Okay, so we can start working through this mess in our calculator. What is the first thing we should do? I would take 0.154 minus 0.132. Does that make sense? I'm going to pull that over. Basically, we're working to get R sub B by itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is pull this over. So I'm getting 0 0.022. Is that correct? So 0 0.022 is equal to 24,000 divided by, oh, by the way, this should be 35,000, right? Divide by 35,000. Now, if I, here's what I'm going to do. Look at this. Boom, boom. Those things cancel out, right? Now I don't have to type all the zeros, and I don't have to worry about losing track of them in my calculator. And then this is multiplied by 0 0.66. And then uh, this is times 0 0.132 minus R sub B. OK. What would you do next? Mr. Crawford, what you do next? Divide by 24 over 35. Yeah, so uh, <coughs> divide by 24 over 35 is the same as multiplying by 35 over 24. And hey, we could kill even one more bird while we're at this. Let's take, um, uh, so we'll multiply both sides by 35, and then we'll divide both sides by 24 times 0.66. Do you see how that works? So once we do that, can someone tell me what this number over here is? What is 0 0.022 times 35 divided by 0.66 divided by 24? You got it, Mr. Crawford? I think so. 0 0.0486. 0 0.0486, something like that? Yeah. Okay, and so now we have that is equal to 0 0.132 minus R sub B. Notice, have I shared something about this person? No, I'm just, I think I, my brain screwed up. 
Are you an algebra sufferer? Well, that's why I requested this problem, because my algebra is rusty. Yeah. So first of all, I've got an algebra review that's out there. Have you guys seen that? Do my algebra review. Okay. Um, it's, it's a shame. You guys have been totally messed over by the educational system. You break it down step by step. Oh, do you want just like a visual? Just one little bite-sized morsel at a time? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I know that's not really basic, but it goes pretty far. Okay. Let's say we're going to go 0 0.22, oh, 0 0.022, and we're going to multiply by 35. Do you see why we're multiplying by 35? We're trying to yeah. get this up here. So we, multi we, we multiply both sides by 35. Yeah. Okay. Now, we are also going to divide by 24. Because that's on the top. We divide both sides by that. That goes away. Yeah. Right? And then we also want to divide both sides by 0.66. And so, 0 0.66. And that is all going to be equal to 0 0.132 minus R sub B. I should go ahead and get my calculator up here. in the calculator, here's what I would do. 0.022 times 35 equals divide by 24 divide by 0.66. And then we get the number Mr. Crawford gave us earlier, which is 0.046. Okay. Yes? Alright, so I, I got a little confused there. So the, the B over S uh -huh. I thought B equals 35,000. Am I wrong? Um, well, let's go back and look at this problem statement. It says that the company has $24,000 in debt. 24000 would be B. Oh, I switched Oh, man. You had the equity to debt ratio. Right. Yeah, that'll screw your math up. Okay. Are you with me so far? Okay, now what's the very next thing that I'm going to do to get R sub B by itself? And I'm going to subtract 0.132 by, from both sides. Point one, oh shoot. Let's see. Point zero two two times 35 divided by 24 divided by 0.66 equals, and then I'm going to subtract Point one three two. Now I've got this negative point oh eight three 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 d, 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 is equal to negative r sub b. What happens with those negatives? Yeah, they just cancel out. And what are we left with? We're left with eight point thirty four percent. So if something is on the top over here to get rid of it on both sides, we divide by it. If something's on the bottom, what do we do? Multiply by it. If something's being subtracted over here, what would we do to get rid of it? Add it. If something's being added, what do we do? Subtract it. Does that make sense? Yeah, so I don't know what the hell happened to algebra education in this country, but man, you guys have been let down. And I've been paying my taxes to, to teach you guys algebra and stuff, so I feel like I've been ripped off. Okay. That was question, which one? 64. 64. So now we'll go on to number 65. The Border Cafe has a cost of equity of 13.2% and a pre-tax cost of debt of 7.5%. The debt-to-equity ratio is 
0.6 and the tax rate is 35%. Oh my goodness, this one's cruel. Can anyone tell me why making you solve for the unlevered cost of equity is cruel? It shows it twice in the equation, doesn't it? Oh my goodness, that's just not right. Okay, so we have got R sub S is equal to, once again, 0 0.132. Actually, that's the same numbers last time for R sub 0, different variable. Uh, Pre-tax cost of debt is 7.5%. What would that be? R sub B, very good. The debt to equity ratio is 0.6. The tax rate is 35%. And they're asking us what is the unlevered cost of capital. So what we're looking for is R sub zero. We don't know it. So we're going to do exactly the same thing we did last time. We're going to start with R sub S over here on the left hand side. 0 0.132. That is equal to R sub 0, but we don't know R sub 0, so we're going to put that there. Plus the debt to equity ratio, which they gave us as 0 0.6. They also gave us the tax rate, which is 35%. If I take 1 minus 0 0.35, that gives me 0 0.65. Does everybody catch that? Okay, so I'm going to say times 0 0.65, and then we're going to multiply by, open parentheses, once again R sub 0, which we don't know, minus uh, R sub B, which we do know to be 0 0.075. Have I screwed anything up so far? Okay, now we need to start working to try to get R sub 0 on one side and the numbers on the other side. So the first thing that I'm going to do is expand this thing by distributing these. Do you guys know about the distributive property? I don't know what you do and don't know, so yeah. Okay, so we're going to start with 0 0.132 is equal to R sub 0 plus, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take 0 0.6 or 0 0.6 times 0.65 is equal to 0.39. Is that what correct? And so that's going to be equal to 0 0.39 times R sub 0. Are you with me so far? Minus, we've got to multiply this thing by also 0.39. Do you see why that is? Because I'm distributing this over both of these. And so what I'm going to do is go ahead and multiply this by 0.075. And this is what I get. 0 0.02925. If you're getting something different, please let me know. Okay. Now, Mr. Stoner. How can I get all the clean numbers on one side, the numbers without variables on them? How can I do that? Yeah, so what have I got to do with this number? Yeah, you got to add it to both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and say plus 0 0.132 equals. And that's going to be 0 0.16125. Does that make sense? Okay, now, if I add r sub 0 together with 0.39 r sub 0, what do I get? 1.39 r sub 0. Does everybody understand why that is? There's an invisible 1 right here. We're almost there. Now, what do I do to this number to get r sub 0 by itself? Divide both sides by 1.39. Equals. 
I'm getting 11.60%, which is exactly what they got. Sports has a targeted debt to equity ratio of 0.65. Its cost of equity is 16%, pre tax cost of debt is 5%, and its tax rate is 22%. What's the company's weighted average cost of capital? So, by this time in your finance careers, uh, there's a certain formula that should be burned into your minds. And here it comes. Our WAC is equal to. Uh, let's see, bond over bond plus, actually let's go with equity first because that's the way you're used to seeing it. Stocks divided by stocks plus bonds, which is just the proportion of the capital structure that is equity, multiplied by the required return on equity plus bonds divided by stocks plus bonds times what? Return, require return on debt, and then multiply by one more thing. If we've got taxes, what's in that parentheses? Yeah, one minus T sub C. Okay, now here is what's giving you guys troubles. That target debt to equity ratio of 0.65, most students have trouble understanding how to convert that into um, the total debt ratio and the total equity ratio. So let's walk through how to do that. So what we've got here, that debt to equity ratio is just TD over TE is equal to 0 0.65. Do you guys remember that the equity multiplier is just 1 plus the debt to equity ratio? If you don't, we can, there, there are other ways we can go about this. So I'll take you the long way and then we'll talk about the shortcut. Okay, so here, if we've got TD over uh, TE is equal to 0.65, we can multiply both sides by TE and get TD is equal to 0 0.65 TE. Have I blown anybody's mind? Okay, now we also know that total assets is equal to total debt plus total equity. Are we cool with that? Okay, now. Here's the fun thing. I can, wherever I see total debt, I can substitute 0 0.65 T sub, or TE. Do you, you guys know that's called the what, substitution principle? And so we've got total assets is equal to 0 0.65 TE plus TE. So what's that going to come out to be when I add 0.65 TE to TE? Very good, 1.65 TE. I knew you guys could do it because you've already done it today. Okay, now, what is, let's see, let's figure out first what TD over TA is. So if I say TD over TA, I can use that substitution principle and I've got 0 0.65 TE divided by the total assets, which we said was 1.65 TE. What happens to the TEs? They're gone, right? There's your total debt ratio. Now, the total equity ratio, uh, we can just say TE over TA. And so it would just be TE divided by 1.65 TE. And that's just going to be 1 over 1.65. Now, how can you check your work? We know these things have to add to 1. Is 1 plus 0.65 divided by 1.65? 1. Yeah. Okay, so how could we write this in a way 
that would be easier for you to remember. How about TD over TA is equal to uh, the debt to equity ratio divided by 1 plus the debt to equity ratio. So if you wrote that on your formula sheet, you would be able to make that conversion quite easily. We could also say that TE divided by TA is equal to 1 over 1 plus the debt to equity ratio. And so if you were to write that on your formula sheet, you could make that yeah, conversion quite easily. Yes? And so basically that TE over TA substitutes for the, uh, basically the equity over by to provide. Yep, this is just TE over TA. Okay. And this is just TD over TA. Okay, now do we have to actually walk through the math or was that the sticking point? Ms. Griffin, that was your question, right? 73. 73. Who's no, was that it? That was mine. Was, that was the Was point. that the sticking point? I was wondering what the, with the math in there, all the 1 minus 1.65 or plus or whatever it was. So you've got it now? Yeah. Okay. Very good. And we will go ahead and call 73 good. And we'll skip on to chapter 15. Ms. Griffin, this one's all here, right? Hmm. I think so. Okay. Yeah. This tells me either number one, you were the only one that didn't understand it, or number two, you were the only one that did it. So. There's a down. Neighborly fence will have a value of $72,000 if the economy does well this year, and a value of $37,000 if the economy does poorly. The probability of a good economy is 76%. Uh, so, by the way, what does that mean the probability of a bad economy is? What do they have to add to? Yes, yeah, so they have to add to one, right? So that means the bad economy is 24%. The firm owes its bondholders 21000 What's the total market value of the firm if it only operates for one more year? The probability of bad is 0 0.24. And then they tell us the value of the firm. They say it'll be 72,000 if times are good, and it'll be 37,000 if times are bad. Now they're just asking us for the total market value of the firm. That would be the market value of the debt plus the market value of the equity. Uh, but we don't need to worry about that. $21,000 that they owe bondholders because we're just talking about the overall value of the firm. So what do we got here? We're just going to figure out the expected value is going to be 0 0.76 times 72,000 plus 0 0.24 times 37,000. And if we do that math, hopefully we get 63,600. Do you need to see the math? Okay, so you've got this this one? Yeah, I just wanted to click. I don't know. Okay. Now we're on to number 42. ATC has a value of 98000 in a normal economy and 87000 in a recession. The firm has $90,000 worth of debt. The probability of a recession is 18%. In fact, let's go ahead and say normal and recession. They say the probability of a recession is how much? 18%? 0 0.18. What does that mean the probability at normal times is? 0.82. Yeah, 0 0.82. Okay. 
They tell us the firm is considering a project that would change the value, the firm's value, to one hundred five thousand in an account. Oh, okay. So we're, we're talking about uh, so the value with no project is going to be equal to ninety-eight thousand, and the value with no project in a recession is eighty-seven thousand. By the way. The uh, bondholders, if there's a recession, are they going to be losing some money? Yeah, because the firms are only going to be worth eighty-seven thousand in a recession, uh, and they got ninety thousand worth of debt, so the debt holders are going to lose three thousand bucks in a recession. The probability of da, 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 uh, to, uh, they're considering a firm that would change the firm's value to one hundred and five thousand. What is the value of the project? Is one hundred and five thousand in good times? And ninety-two thousand in a recession. If the firm accepts accepts the project, the firm value will, and shareholder value will. Okay. So what's the current firm value? Uh, okay. So. It, the, the current firm value would be this expected value of no project, right? And so what we're going to do is say uh, 0 0.18 times 98,000 plus 0 0.82 times what? Oh, shh, I got that back. We're done. Damn it. 0 0.82 and 0 0.18 times. 87,000. If we do that math out, they tell us it's 96,020 bucks, but we're going to go ahead and make sure that math is correct. Clear. 0.82 times 98,000 equals plus, open parentheses, 0.18 times 87,000, close parentheses, equals. I'm getting the same thing they're getting. Now, we need to do the same thing over here for the value with the project. So it's going to be 0 0.82 times 105,000, and it'll be 0 plus 0 0.18 times 92,000. And they're telling us that when that happens, the value of the firm is 102,660. Do I need to do that math out or do you believe it? Do you believe it? Okay. Now, it's asking us the firm value, how much will it change? It's going to increase, if I take this minus 96,000, 0 to 0 is going to increase by 6,640, the full value of the firm. Do you guys see that? Okay, now, the question is, what's going to happen to your shareholder value? So let's talk about uh, what happens to shareholders. In fact, the value in normal times with no project? Well, it's 98000 and then they have to pay off the debt. How much debt is there? <coughs> 90000 So that means that this is going to be 8000 That's the value to the shareholders in normal times with no project. What's the value to the shareholders in recession with no project? Zero. Okay, now let's talk about if we've got uh, 105,000 value here and we pay off the 90,000 worth of debt, how much is the project, or how much is the shareholders piece? 15,000. 15, 
And down here, we say the value is 92000 After you get your paying off $90,000 of debt, what's left for the shareholders? 2000 Okay, now, how are we going to figure out the value here? It's 0 0.82 times 8,000 plus 0 0.18 times 0. So do I have to actually do anything with this at all? No, anything times 0 is just 0. So I'm going to take 0 0.82 times 8,000. And we have 6,560. Does that number make it work for you? Did you guys get that? Okay, now over here we've got 0 0.82 times 82,000. No, wait a minute, sorry. 15,000. Plus 0 0.18 times 2,000. So let's do that on our calculators. By the way, I'm going to store this one, store one. And I've got 15,000 times 0.82 equals, that doesn't make sense, 0.82 times 8,000. Oh, we're already on this. I'm sorry, I'm losing it over here. 15,000, right? Okay, now we have to add, open parentheses, 0.18 times 2,000, close parentheses, equals, I'm getting 12,660, is that what you're getting? Okay, now all I have to do is subtract 6560, and when I do that, I get $6,100. And so the overall value of the firm goes up by $6,640. The value to shareholders goes up by $6,100. What's the goal of financial management? Maximize shareholder wealth. Should we accept this project? Yes. Yeah. What if we did this and it only benefited the bondholders but not the shareholders? Sorry, right? Because I've only got one job. Maximize your hold on. Questions? Yeah. Do you want to scroll down so I can take a picture of the work on the board? Do I? I'll make it next. Oh, so like that? Yeah. Got it? No. Okay. So that was number 42. Now we'll move on to number 44. Vaughn Craft Supply expects to generate a cash flow of 83,000 next year if the economy booms, 61,000 if it does not. The probability of a boom is 20%. The firm has $78,000 in debt that's due in one year and a current market value of 70,000. Oh, it has a current market value of 70,600. So this debt is selling at a discount. The firm plans to close after this coming year. The current promised pre tax return on debt is. And the expected pre tax return on debt is. Okay, so I'm going to erase all this crap. Okay, so uh, we're going to have. Uh, so the, the, they're promising to pay $78,000. Can you see that? You see, they, they say this, the debt of $78,000 is due in one year. So that's going to be basically my piece of one. And so I've got $78,000 here. But what's it worth right now? How much? $70,600. And then we always divide once again by the current value, which is $70,000. 600. So let's go ahead and get our calculators out.
I'm getting 10.48%. Now, I remember this one. This is the one where the, the answer that they're showing is not correct. Do you remember that, Ms. Griffin? Now I do. Oh, okay. I think that's why. So was your answer for the other one minus 8.78%? Yeah. Okay, are we okay with skipping this one then? Yeah. Okay. Moving on to 45, we're running gear as bonds outstanding with a face value of 280,000 that are selling at par. It also has 22,500 shares of stock outstanding that are selling for 1450 a share. The all, if the all equity value of the firm is 764,000, the tax rate is 21%. What is the value of the financial distressed costs? Okay. So, they've already told us what this firm is currently uh, selling for. And so it's 764,000 is the all, all equity, or yeah, all equity price. So, the value of the levered firm is equal to the value of the unlevered firm minus TC sub B. You guys remember that? Okay. The value of the levered firm here, they're telling it, or of the unlevered firm, is how much? So yeah, 764,000. By the way, that should be plus, not minus, right? Plus, the tax rate is 0 0.21 times, what's the market value of the debt? 280,000. By the way, in this case, the market value and the book value of the debt are the same simply because the debt's selling at par. But if we were given different market value and book value, which one would we use in this calculation? Yeah, market value. Okay. So now we've got um, this. We can go ahead and do this math. Point twenty-one times. 280,000. Why did I jump there? Because multiplication and division comes before addition and subtraction. That's 58,000 plus 764,000 equals 822,800. That is the theoretical value of this firm if there were no financial distress costs. Because remember, Modigliani and Miller, with taxes, doesn't assume uh, anything. So, so basically, that formula doesn't assume any downside to debt. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to figure out what's going on in the real world, figure out what the firm is worth in the real world, and then subtract that value from this value here. And therefore, what's left over is going to be that cost of financial distress, expected cost of financial distress. So, how do we figure that out? Well, we know that the value is the debt plus the equity. We know that the debt is worth $280,000 plus the equity. How are we going to figure out the value of the equity? $1450 plus $22,000. Yeah, 1450 times what, $22,500? Like that? So, which one of those am I going to do first in the calculator? Multiplication. Yeah. So I'm going to say 14.5 times 22,500 equals plus 280,000. And a 606. And so what is our cost of financial distress? We just subtract this and from our 822,800 equals, I'm getting 216,550. Does that make sense? Why is the tax rate not involved with the debt at all in this one? Why is the tax rate not involved with the debt? At all. Oh, because we're looking at firm, we're looking at value, not required return. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Because interest is tax deductible. 
principal is not. So value doesn't involve tax at all? Well, so sometimes. we said that the value of the levered firm is equal to the value yeah, of the unlevered firm plus the tax rate times. So we can't say that it's not involved, right? But in a current situation, we don't use tax. Yeah, so basically what I'm doing is going out there and seeing what's the market price per unit of the debt multiplied by the number of units outstanding. That's at 280000 And then I pop over here and I say, what's the market value per unit of the stock multiplied by the number of shares of stock? And that's the value, the market value of the equity. To get the market value of the firm, all I got to do is add those two together. Okay, because the debt only helps out the return later on. Oh, not that the tax rate. Yeah, so okay. the the debt is impacting the return. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you were using like if we were figuring out the weighted average cost of capital, for sure we'd be taking that uh, return on the debt multiplied by one minus two. Okay. Questions? Yeah, let's look at homework number ten. Uh, chapter sixteen, homework number ten. Okay, Jonathan owns 500 shares of restaurant management stock. The stock will pay a dividend of $1.58 at the end of year one and $1.64 at the end of year two. Jonathan does not want any dividend income during year, no, year one, but does want as much dividend income as possible in year two. He's planning on creating his homemade dividends and can borrow and lend at 70% ignoring taxes. What will his homemade dividend be per share uh, during year two. And we should say, scratch out the word homemade there and put total, because there's a portion of this is homemade and a portion of it that is not. The dollar sixty-four he's gonna be receiving from the company is not a homemade dividend, right? What we're going to figure out here that he can do is gonna be his homemade dividend. First thing I wanna do though, is draw out the timeline. Here's the timeline. So, what they say they're going to do is they're going to pay a dollar fifty-eight here and a dollar sixty-four here. Did I get that right? Okay. Now we know that the present value of these things that he can create a uh, homemade dividend that has the same present value. And the present values we're going to be figuring out with this required rate of return, which is we said was 7%. So here's what he's going to do. Because he doesn't want this dollar fifty-eight. What he's going to do is he's going to take that dollar fifty-eight and he's going to invest it for one year at 7%. Does that make sense? Multiply by 1.07, so we get the future value of that dollar fifty-eight here at time two. So if I take 1.58 times 1.07, that gives me 1.6906 plus the dollar sixty-four from time two, and that gives me three dollars and thirty three cents. Now we could have, if he had wanted to have all of this at time one, all we would have said is that he's going to get a dollar fifty eight plus the present value of a dollar sixty four. So if he wanted it all at time one, that's what he would have gotten. If he's going to get it at time two, he'd get this three dollars and thirty three cents a share. And here's the fun thing. The present value of both of those are identical. He cannot create or destroy value by the homemade dividends thing, which is why Modigliani and Miller use that as a rationale for you can't create uh, dividends. You can't create value simply by messing around with your dividends. Questions? Yes. 